Welcome to this week's Tarot Energies forecast, reading and reflection on life for the week of August 2nd through the 9th. And as always, just take what resonates with you, what connects with you deep inside, and also look at anything that you might want to push away. There's also a message in that as well. So I've selected three cards. I'm using the Robin Wood Tarot deck. First card is the overview, the second card is the challenge, and the third card is the best way to move forward for the, the highest good, the, the most harmonious outcome. And interestingly enough, I've, it's quite interesting already because all three cards are from the Major Arcana, and a tarot deck is 78 cards. 22 out of them are Major Arcana, which are major themes, larger forces, you could say, that we can't really change. They're forces that, that shape us, that are us, in a, in a sense. Archetypal forces. We can mostly just respond to how we, how we work with them, how we respond to them. <laughs> and the first card that came through, the Overview card, is the Hierophant. Okay, the Hierophant, Hierophant's just uh, an ancient word from Egypt. It, it basically means, if you look at the picture, it's, you see kind of like a Catholic-looking uh, priest or, or pope-type figure. And in some decks, it's actually called the Pope. So what does this represent? It represents tradition. You know, the tradition of, of what people believe in and everything that's been carried forward and and the things that, you know, which is import, an important part of humanity and society. We need to carry forward those things that we, we know work. Certain foods that are safe to eat, for example. Certain agricultural methods. Anything that helps us to survive. Any kind of wisdom like that. But here we're talking about the tradition, tradition of, of belief. And so now, that's, that's the overview. Okay, and it can also, on a, a more superficial level of life uh, represent institutions such as government institutions, banking institutions, universities, anything traditional or family tradition even. Okay, it can also mean sometimes um, looking deeper. There, there are, despite the tradition and, and uh, the, the church, I'm not, it's, it's got a lot of uh, spiritual undertones as well because the church was originally founded on spiritual understanding. Of course, it's been layered and layered and layered and layered with all this tradition and distortion since then. So moving forward to uh, the um, challenge, we have the world card. And the world card is generally a very positive card. It's, it's the final card in the major arcana, so it's like a completion of some kind. It's, it's completing a task, completing a project of some kind, reaching a new level, um, com closing a chapter in life. Not like the death card, like an ending, like in that sense of, and not physical death, by death I mean a transformation. Um, it's, it's not like that kind of an ending, it's just something is, it's like a, a celebration ending almost, like where you've, you've got the gold medal, you could say. But on a deeper level, the way I'm seeing this right now is that the challenge is the world because we, you can't necessarily, I mean, if you want to run away and become a hermit or a monk, fine. Um, that's, that's, you know, it's your life. I'm just saying most of us are here to engage with the world. We have to find ways to engage with the world, but the world is kind of crazy and it always, you know, it's, it's not only these times that are crazy, it's, it's more obvious in these times uh, because of the, you know, there's a lot of intensity right now and there's more media than ever and the world, the global village, or you could call it, or the world is getting sort of smaller in that sense of being able to see everything that's going on, more cameras everywhere, that type of thing. But there's always been this, you know, sort of craziness. You know, we all get indoctrinated into it in one way or another you know, uh, black versus white, Hindu versus Muslim, you know, on and on and on, Protestant versus Catholic, atheist versus believer, 
you know, they're all two sides, you could say, of the same coin. So, you know, if, because when you believe in something, it's, I'm not saying don't have any beliefs or have don't have any opinions, but I'm just saying to look at this because it's the source of all the conflict. All the conflict you see in the world around you is, the source of it is the conflict within ourselves. We are, who, when you look, what, what do you think you are? You know, your personality, all your beliefs, your attitudes, you didn't, you didn't, pick those up off a hat you they were put into you from you know your family your your culture that you were raised in your education your teachers it was all put into you from templates that already existed in the world okay so then you're in this sort of you you think you you know we think we have freedom so I'm going to include myself obviously we think we have freedom but we're only choosing between these preset patterns that are already in us. We're just choosing and ultimately between reward and punishment, you know, ple uh, pleasure versus pain. So there's, you know, what I'm trying to get at is there is a freedom, but we have to go deeper than these superficial, you know, beliefs because otherwise that conflict will always be. And that's what we're seeing in the world. We're seeing all the conflict between if you have a belief, you have to defend it to the life. You, you, somebody with a different belief, you have to be against that person because you have to stick with your belief in order to survive. <laughs> because you believe, you believe, again, that word, you identify with that belief so strongly you think it's who you are. And when you, you, and we, I should say we, because I, I want to include myself when we identify so strongly with our beliefs, we have to have enemies. And this isn't to say, obviously, that you need to, I like everyone, oh, ho oh, oh. ho. <laughs> it's not what this is about. This is deeper than that. This is looking and seeing what's actually, how your mind is working, all these beliefs and attitudes, and realize how that freedom is not really there. It's all within a, a certain limiting structure of the mind and what's been put into the mind and other people have different models right or wrong they have different models okay so it's just a place to start from until we see that until we can see it in ourselves we have no chance to be free we're just choosing off the same menu all the time and that's not really freedom real freedom is to see but of course we need the mind we need that memory and and knowledge in order to function, we, we have to tie our shoes, we have to know our phone number, our email address, we have to know how to plan things and strategize and, and do all these complex things that we need to do in this world nowadays. But when our mind takes us over and we think we, are, we so strongly identify with the thoughts and the beliefs and the attitudes as being who we are, and even to think, I don't, I don't identify with them, I'm, I'm a spirit, I'm a higher self, that's still a mind-made concept. So that's the challenge, is how do we deal with the world when we are the world, <laughs> with the programming and everything that I've been talking about, and how do we deal with it? How do we create the change? We have to create the change in ourselves first. Obviously, that's sort of a meme that everybody knows now, but what does it really mean? To create change isn't just moving things around, the furniture around. You have to go much deeper. Okay, and to move forward, what we need to do to move forward, to to create, have no conflict inside ourselves and therefore no conflict around us, we have to be innocent. And the, the Fool card came, okay, so that's what I'm getting here. The, one of the main meanings of the Fool card is innocence. Okay, and on a more, again, on a more uh, superficial level of our lives. The Fool card is uh, new, brand new beginnings, brand new, something brand new out of the blue is entering your life, a brand new opportunity. Take that leap of faith, make a choice. Do you want to take that leap of faith or not? Something brand new. And usually it's positive, okay, because it's a freshness, a fresh start, wiping the slate clean, so to speak. But on this deeper level that I've been speaking about, uh, the Fool if you look at him, he's, it's innocence. He's, he's just willing to, to be in the moment, to be free from 
all that tradition with the Hierophant card that I was speaking of before, all that weight of thousands upon thousands of years of civilization that's in, in our minds from the past. And we have to deal with the present moment, but the past is always in conflict with the present moment. If you notice inside yourself, you want, you always in a, are in a hurry to get to the next thing because you don't want to, you want to get to the next moment, the, the imaginary future in your mind. You can't escape the present moment, but in your mind you are resisting to, to get to the next moment. And again, sorry, we, because we're all in this. We're all, I only know what I'm talking about because I've looked at it in myself and I'm still looking at it in myself. If you don't see it, that's, seeing it is actually how to be free of it. And it's something you can't just have and, and then you've got it. <laughs> you always have to be alert and present in the moment as best you can. So that's what the Fool card is saying. But again, the shadow side here of the Fool card could be being foolish, being, you know, so much uh, in the moment, like I'm just in the moment, I'm just, and not actually dealing with things uh, maybe that need to be dealt with. I'm not saying never think. We thought is a tool that we need, as I said. We need to maybe to pay some bills. You need to use your thought to organize how are you going to structure your budget this week or this month type of thing. You know, you need to use thought. It's not saying don't use thought, but it, what happens is thought is using us. Thought has taken over and started using us and we think we are. We are the thought. The, the thought is the thinker. We think we're the thinker, but the thinker is just the thought. So what it's saying here is to, the way I like to put it usually, uh, I'm quite fond of putting it I don't know if anybody else ever has put it this way, but this is how I've been putting it for a while now, is that you want to be able to, your, your true nature, you could say, for lack of a better word, um, or, or reality, wants to be in the driver's seat, needs to be in the driver's seat, and the mind, the mind in the passenger seat, the mind made sense of self in the passenger seat, but what happens to us Quite often is the mind made sense of self gets into the driver's seat and takes over. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, the, um, the robot driven cars, <laughs> you know, the mind made sense of self get, takes over. So we don't want to necessarily completely stop thinking. We just want to be able to have the presence and the awareness to be able to think when we need to, and then put it down and just be what we already are. But again, don't believe me, find out for yourself. I think that more and more people are starting to resonate with this kind of message and find these things out. Not intellectually, again, it's an experiential thing that we need to discover for ourselves. But um, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed that message. And by the way, I have a free tarot crash course I'm almost done and it will be on my website for anybody who subscribes to my newsletter you'll be able to take that it'll get you up and running with tarot so that you'll be able to use the cards for yourself for your own understanding knowing yourself and also um, I give readings of course you can check that out on my website that's it for now thank you so much for watching and have an awesome week